An electromagnetic wave propagating towards the ground will be in the presence of the Earth's magnetic field. And also, as mentioned earlier, the ionosphere is comprised of electrons. The Earth's magnetic field by itself is not really going to impact the wave propagation because it's basically constant over the time span of the wave propagating towards the ground. However, in the ionosphere, we have electric charges, the electrons, that are in the presence of the Earth's magnetic field, as well as in the presence of the propagating electromagnetic wave from our satellite. And from earlier discussions in this class, we've found that electrons can experience forces, like Coulomb and the Lorentz forces, when they're in the presence of electric and magnetic fields. So let's take a closer look at this. Let's consider all the different forces an electron will feel in the ionosphere. First, we can have inertia, which is mass times acceleration. And then we can have a Lorentz force, E, times propagation speed crossed with B, the Earth's magnetic field. Now notice I'm only writing the Earth's magnetic field because it's, it's orders of magnitude stronger than the magnetic field in our propagating electromagnetic wave. And then we can have mass, um, this is friction, times the collision frequency <laughs> of our electron. I'll do a little squiggly there to show it's different from the velocity of the electron. And that's also times the velocity. And then we also have Coulomb's force, which is the electron charge times the electric field. So all this together would equal zero, all the four different forces added together. On this side, you can see everything defined in all the different forces labeled on the electron. Now let's take this a step further because the ionosphere is made up of more than just one electron. We have a volume filled with electrons, the ionosphere space, all over it, it's all the space it takes up. And these moving electrons, uh, due to the forces, these forces that they feel, constitute a current density. So we could say J for these moving electrons is minus N E V, where N here is the density of the electrons. Plugging this current density equation into our earlier equation for the forces felt by an electron, we come up with what's shown here. If we take a step back and consider what we have here, we have an equation where the electric field of our propagating electromagnetic wave here, that's the electric field of our wave propagating, it impacts the J current density, because it shows up in this equation. But from Maxwell's equations, and specifically Ampere's law, J, this current density, shows up in Ampere's law, meaning that the flow of electrons in the ionosphere impacts the propagation of our electromagnetic wave. In other words, these three equations are coupled together and we need to solve all three of them in order to accurately predict the propagation of electromagnetic waves through the ionosphere. Here we have Maxwell's equations, Ampere's and Faraday's laws, which we both have talked have talked about both of these, and then here we have what's called the plasma momentum equation. And these are coupled together by the electric field, which shows up here and also here, because we have epsilon E, and also uh, the J current density, which shows up here. And then uh, I could circle any of these in this equation. Another simplified way of looking at this is that as an approximation, we can just solve Maxwell's equations by themselves, just these two equations, while allowing the permittivity and the conductivity to be tensors. That's shown here. Meaning that uh, when the material parameters are tensors, it means we have anisotropic wave propagation, where the material parameters and the propagation characteristics of the electromagnetic wave depend on which direction the wave is propagating in. So the ionosphere ani is an anisotropic medium or material. The way that we've written the tensors here holds for an electromagnetic wave propagating in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. Um, so B, Z is in the Z direction. So the Earth's magnetic field would be in the Z direction. The effect of having tensors 
is that now instead of j is equal to sigma e, we're going to have jx, jy, jz is equal to this tensor for sigma times e, x, e, y, and e, z. And same here for d, dx, dy, dz is equal to um, epsilon, the electric field, ex, ey, ez. So physically, what this means when we have these tensors, it means that the electric field is, turns out it's going to spin around the Earth's magnetic field. In other words, the electromagnetic wave is going to start to rotate as it propagates through the ionosphere. And this process is called Faraday rotation. And depending on the propagation direction relative to the Earth's magnetic field, we can get either circular or elliptical polarization. From a wave that's initially linearly polarized, it'll start to turn into circular or elliptical polarization. Here is an example of circular polarization. If the wave is circularly polarized, the electric field over time, so this is at z equals zero, all these plots are at z equals zero, and time evolves as we go on. And as you can see, here's the electric field. As, it, uh, as time evolves, it starts to trace out a, uh, a circle, which is where it gets its name. If the wave is propagating out of the screen towards you in the positive z direction, the wave is right hand circularly polarized because with a thumb of our right hand pointing in the direction of propagation, our fingers curl around in the direction of the electric field rotation, which is in this direction over time. If the wave was instead propagating into the screen, then we would say it was left hand circularly polarized. We can even design antennas to purposely create a circularly polarized wave. Here is an example of one where the conductor of the antenna is shaped like a spiral. Now, is this wave right hand or left hand circularly polarized? It's right hand circularly polarized with time. If we pick a position, say right where this black circle is, and trace out the electric field over time, we can see it follows the right hand rule with our thumb pointing in the direction of propagation. But be careful about how you're looking at this um, because this wave is left hand circularly polarized with distance. So make sure you pick a position, uh, plane z equals constant, and see how it evolves over time in order to determine the polarization. If the expression shown here is the electric field phasor for a linearly polarized wave, spend a minute and write out what you think the general form for the electric field phasor should be for a circularly polarized wave. <laughs> 